Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Ben Schubert. I am a filmmaker based in Vancouver, BC, and today we're talking about how to nail exposure on the C200. So I hear a lot of talk about noise in the shadows for the C200, maybe pastel skin tones if you're not, if you're overexposing too much. So today I want to talk about tips and tricks you can use to get a good exposure on this camera. So C200, it's a great camera. It's been out for a while. And you know, you might have gotten into this camera being enticed by the raw, being like, oh, there's so much ability, so much room to move and so much ability to grade and all this stuff. And then you go out, you shoot, everything looks great on the monitor. And then you get back to your office, your studio, and your footage just doesn't look how you thought it did. It doesn't match what you saw on the monitor. It's just not really working for you. And not only that, maybe your shadows are really noisy and you either have to choose between getting any sense of skin tone or just dealing with noise. Today, we're gonna to talk a bit about how to avoid that, how to get exposure properly, being able to do this without an external monitor. So I often shoot with the Ninja 5, but there's actually something in the camera that I find super helpful for hitting exposure. And so we're gonna talk about today. So for the most part, I shoot on raw light. I think it's the better codec to use in this camera. You can use the other codecs and that's fine. And these tips will actually help you with those. And the thing about the 8-bit codecs is because there's so much less information and there's less wiggle room to mess up, knowing how to expose properly for both the raw and the 8-bit will really, you know, make sure that you're getting the best images possible. So for me, the key to getting a great exposure on this camera and making sure that you're nailing things and that you're not getting noise in your shadows is the waveform. The waveform scope will give you a real sense of what's actually going on in the signal and learning how to use the waveform and understand that signal will really give you better control over your images and really better control over what you're doing as a cinematographer. You can't and you shouldn't trust your monitors. It doesn't matter how great your monitor is. If you don't understand how your signal operates, you're leaving a lot of your image up to chance or to subjective ideas of how your monitor looks in that moment. And what I've found with monitors is because they're set so bright, you're often underexposing by exposing to your monitor. And if it looks good on your monitor, there's a really good chance that it doesn't look good in the signal. So I think I should actually do another video just on waveforms and how they operate. So just to give you a quick overview of how a waveform operates, think of it like a scale that shows you luminance values in your image, right? So for instance, um, you can see in this one, you know, where the peaks are, are your brightest points and when your shadows are, are your lowest points. So for example, you can see with, you know, my face is a brighter spot. If I move my space, you can see where it is on the image. You can see where the brighter spots are. You can see where those shadowy spots are. You can see on this black background. So this is a fully black wall behind me that has a light shining on it. So we've got a bit of a gradient spreading across. And then I'm just gonna step out of the way for a second. Now you can see on the waveform which parts of the wall are brighter and which parts of the wall are darker. So basically waveform is just a scale of luminous values across your scene. So understanding where your image should land for brightness is a big part of understanding how your image is gonna look in the end. So another thing to understand is that your waveform will actually show you your signal in the log format that you're working in. So when you're shooting raw on the C200, you're actually in C log two, which means that that's the, you know, the log flavor that you're getting. So it's a lot more squished of a signal. Um, it doesn't quite touch zero and it doesn't quite touch a hundred, no matter how bright things can get. So one thing that I really recommend having on all the time on your waveform 
is this little box meter and you can see it on this camera and that's actually where the red part is on the waveform. So you can see there's an orange box over my face right now, not the focus guides, but there's a orange box in the center of frame. If I put my face there, everything in the waveform will turn red, right? So anything in front of that box will be red. So if I step out of the way, if I step away, you can see that the spot that's being red at the wall behind me is actually around the 20 IRE mark. Then with my face in the frame, you can see that there's actually a bigger range between say maybe uh, 30 and 60, 30 and 70. I can't exactly see what's going on over there because I've got the camera in the way of the waveform. So when I'm in the field and I'm shooting and I'm trying to maybe expose for a specific subject, especially faces, skin tones, this little box is exactly what I use to make sure that my skin tones are on point. So I think Canon says that the 18% gray for skin tones in C-Log2 is around the 41 mark for 41 IRE. But generally, if it's sitting between 30 and 70, you're in a pretty safe space for how you can expose skin tones on the C200. But for the main part, if you just aim for that general area, you'll be in a very safe space. So next, let's talk about noise. So I hear often about footage being too noisy when shooting raw, uh, things not looking good when you're shooting in C-Log 2. But really, I hear the same thing coming from people who are shooting in C-Log on every other camera from you know the ESR, the C300s. So basically every Canon camera that is shooting in C-Log, a big reason why people are having noisy shadows is because they're underexposing. And personally, I think it comes from looking at the monitor over looking at your scopes. The monitor can trick you because it's bright and it's small. You think that things are okay, but let me tell you, if it looks like it's a good exposure, you are underexposed. I find that looking at this monitor, the monitor should look overexposed, but the waveform is really what's going to tell you. So not only do you use the spot to check that your skin tones or your subject is at the exposure that you want it to be at, the next thing is your shadows. So the trick to using your waveform to expose for shadows is understanding how the waveform should be read. Now, I can't remember if I set this up in the menu somewhere or if it just came like this, but if yours doesn't look like mine, dig through the menus, figure out how to change it. Sorry, I'm not going to be a lot of help there. <laughs> but if you notice on my waveform, there's a line at the 80 IRE mark and there's a line at the 20 IRE mark. For me, anything that needs to be properly exposed cannot touch the 20 IRE mark because anything under the 20 IRE mark is going to be noisy. Or rather, it's shadow detail that has been brought up to get detail into it. So it's like there's more gain added to the shadow area so that there can be detail put into it. But in post, that shadow detail has to be brought back down. It has to be crushed. You can't be bringing that information up. So you'll notice on this black background that it actually all hovers around the 20 IRE mark, maybe a bit lower. But that's actually because like I want I don't want a lot of detail in that. I want a lot of it to be crushed. Yes, there's gonna be a gradient and I'm willing to have that gradient come up to about 20 IRE, but anything else under that is gonna like, it's gonna lose information. Like, what's this, what's this shirt? Like this jacket, let's, let's put that in the spot. Where does that sit? Right, it looks like it sits about 20 as well. So anything under 20 IRE is gonna be noisy if you're not crushing it. Once you crush it down, the chroma noise disappears, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. So really, if you're looking at your waveform, 10 IRE should be your blacks. Anything under 10 IRE, that is information that is gone. So don't expect to get anything back from that. 10 to 20 is gonna be your like deep shadows. So that is, there should be some luminance information there, not a lot but it's just there to be detail in the shadows. 
you do not want things you want exposed properly landing under 20 in your waveforms. That is where you know you've gone too far and your information just isn't there. So for a good exposure, remember you want to be between 30 and 70. That'll get you a really great detail. And then after that, from 70 to 80, that is your highlights. And then 80 to 90 is your like whites. And then really 90 and above is going to be your like bright whites. There might be some trace amounts of detail, but just expect that to be kind of gone because you're going to be bringing it up. But so I would maybe put clouds at about 80 IRE, but I don't like to have things above that either. Uh, so just to do a quick recap on how to expose on the C200 to get what you want, I would say first, make sure that your highlights aren't being clipped. Make sure they're coming in under 90 IRE. 80 to 90 is kind of your like brighter whites with detail. And then your actual things that you're trying to expose for, you want that to be around 40 to 50%. So anything between 30 to 70 is kind of a safe area. Although once you get into 70, your skin tones start to get really pastel and you start losing out on, you know, good detail. So 40 to 50, I think is a good safe space. And then once you get to 20 IRE, that is going to be your shadow area. So anything from 20 to 10 is going to be dark shadows. So understand that anything in there is not something that you can bring up later without it being super noisy. So just keep that in mind. It's just a safe way of doing things. And so that's it. That's the simple way. That wasn't overly complicated. So if this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Give it a, well, give it a like. Don't just show your thumb to the camera. I don't know if that does anything. Subscribe and follow along and I don't know. Let me know if you have any other tips on how to expose with the C200, right? Is there anything that I missed or anything that, that you know, would help other people? That would be great. Anyways, see you later.